Hi, I'm Steve and here we are back in the Maker's Cave. I'm glad you found your way back. Uh, we're going to continue now with our Eagle Moss uh, Eleanor build. This is going to be issue 9, which has stages uh, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Uh, looks like we're going to, from the previous uh, issue, we're going to finish up that tire and rim. Uh, it looks like we have one, looks like a wheel well uh, cover. Uh, another leaf spring, because we did a leaf spring in the last issue. And we have yet the fourth uh, disc brake. And of course, we're going to modify this like we did the other ones and paint it up. So, as usual, screws in the bin, and then we'll bring you guys forward, and we'll start putting all this together. Before we get started with our current issue, I want to go back to the previous issue, which would be issue 8, I believe, uh, kit 29. And you may have seen me, you know, we did the modifications on the on the wheel rotor, okay? Uh, and the two parts went together like this, according to the directions. And then the brake caliper, I thought, was supposed to go over like this and then clip into one of these recesses that you see here in this rotor. Well, one of my viewers pointed out to me, and I guess I wasn't reading closely enough or my old eyes didn't see or I was just rushing but actually the, the rotor goes in the opposite way there's a little whoop <laughs> there's a little clip right here on the rotor Let's see if we can zoom in on that there's a little clip right here yeah right there and that actually is supposed to go into the axle right here and holds everything into place. I, I didn't I didn't read the directions right. Oh, that's not right. No. So we're going to fix that right now. So this basically these two pieces fit over to here. And then this is going to clip onto here and to the back on here. And it's in there. So now, as you can see, the rotor stays on there. And there's what it looks like all assembled. So I want to go back and make that correction that I completely flubbed uh, that uh, kit 29. But now we got it fixed. So now we'll go ahead and we'll start with today's issue. And here we are with issue 9. And let's see, that is going to start off with kit 20, or 20, start off with kit 31. And it wants us to bring back the rim that we did in kit 30. And then in this kit 31, they gave us this metal rim, which we're going to put right on here. Which then gets held on with three DSO2 screws. So there we have it, one rim done. And what they want us to do now is to take the tire and put that on here. And like all the other tires before, I think this will be the fourth one. So this is the last one we'll ever have to do. We have to soak this in some hot water. Again, the, my secret recipe is uh, a bowl of hot water or a bowl, bowl of water in a microwave for three minutes and then let the tire soak for three minutes. So that's what we'll do next, and then we'll be back and finish up. Is I've got a bowl here with some hot water that I put in the microwave on high for three and a half minutes. And what I'll do is I'm gonna drop the tire right in here, put the lid back on so it traps the heat in there, and we're gonna let this sit for about three minutes. And then we'll come back and we will put it on the rim. A few moments later, Okay, it's been soaking for three minutes. We're going to take this out. Very careful, it's hot. Got a paper towel ready. <laughs> Don't stick your fingers in there like I did in the last video. All right, I'm going to take this tire out. We'll dry it off. 
Now here's what I want to show you. Look how pliable and easy that is now. All right, so we take this, move the water aside, and we just can easily push this right onto the rim. Actually, usually how I do it is like this. Just work it right around. And there you go. You may notice that the tire is a little, when you do this, that the tire is a little loose on the rim. Don't worry about that. It will tighten up as it cools. So here's that tire all on the rim. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention before is there's, there's a pattern to the tires. So in the, in the tread, and you want to make sure when you align those, there's like a V. So you want the V to always point towards the front of the car. So we're going to bring back this other tire from the other side. And as you can see, when it oriented like this, let's see if we can get a little bit of a close up on that. You can see that V that's going to go towards the front of the car. All right, now while we're zoomed up here, this is the tire that we just did. And this is the, uh, or the tire and rim. And this is the tire and rim we did from the last issue. And what I forgot to tell, forgot, well, actually what I forgot to do, not tell you, is there is a valve stem right here and right here. It's just simply chrome, the same color as all the other, you know, the rest of the rim right here. Now what we, I've been doing is taking a Sharpie, a fine point Sharpie, and I've been coloring in the valve stem so it's black. And there's that valve stem right there. Makes it look a little bit more realistic. I'm going to put these tires away and rims. And now we are going to move on with the rest of 31, which has us bringing back the floor pan that we did in the previous build. This is orienting the Get them, I'm going to get the magazine out of here to reduce some of the glare. What we're going to be basically doing is we're going to be putting the tire onto this axle. So we have that right here. And it wants us to take one of the tires we just did. I'll make sure I get the right one. Points forward. And we're just simply sliding this onto the end here. whoops and holding that on with a PSO8 screw it's gonna go right into here into the center of the rim I'll tip this up so it makes it a little easier screw is not biting onto it Okay, I've made this mistake before. I'm going to take you through this. You saw this, the um, little cutouts on the rotor right here. Well, on the tire right here, there's a little nibbly bit right there. That has to fit into one of those cutouts. And I did the same thing last time. All right, I stopped recording to see why I couldn't get this tire to go all the way on. And I'm gonna show you exactly what the problem is I ran into. I'm gonna use this uh, rotor from, that's gonna be coming up in the, the next uh, kit. But like I said, there's, I'm gonna zoom in here. There is the little cutout on the shaft of the, of the rim. 
right there. On here, I told you about, you know, it has to fit into one of these grooves, and I was kind of right, but in the inner plastic circle right here, there is a very thin slot. Let's see if we can... Try to see how I can show that to you. Right there, right in there. So that notch I just showed you has to slide into the inner ring. And that's what's been giving me grief on this tire. So once again, we'll try and do this. And I'll line it up, that notch, with this. The trick is you got to get hold the rotor so the tire can slide into the... Because as you're putting it on here, the rotor moves. There we go. Now, when I look in this hole, I can see that the hole of the axle is very flush with the inner rim here. So now we can take our PSO8 screw here. And just like with the front ones, you don't want to do it too tight or else the vehicle won't roll. Okay, that's too tight. As you can see, the tire is not rotating, so I just need to back off that screw a little. And there we go. Now the tire rolls. All right, well, that was a bit of a learning curve there. And I'm looking over the directions, and nowhere in there do they say anything about, you know, lining up that notch. I mean, it's pretty intuitive once you look at the part, but it'd be nice if they gave you a, a heads up. So that is it for kit 32. We're just going to put this up here for right now. And now we're going to move on, 31 rather. Now we're going to move on to 32, and we're going to be using this tire shroud. So he wants to bring back the floor plant pan and it goes, lives right down in here. There's little pins that it sits on. So it goes right just like that. And they get held on with some DSO2 screws. All right, it's taking some shape now. There you go. And that is it for kit 32. Now we are moving back and we are doing kit 33. And we're gonna be doing some leaf spring work like we did before. So in advance, make sure you get your pliers ready because we're gonna be putting some metal pins in with these parts. It's easier to do with a pair of pliers. So first thing let's do is flip this over orient it like this and it wants us to take 33D which we have right here and we're going to put that right up here bring that in so we put this part right in here oops I think I got it in backwards, which would be the norm for me. All right, there we go. Now, now the part's in here. And that wants to get held in with a PS05 screw. So we're going to flip this over. I use my thumb to keep it in place. Okay, flip it back over. Now it wants us to do the other end, which is right up here. And that gets part 33C. Just slides into the little hole right there. 
And again, that gets held in with a PSO5 screw. So again, we'll just flip this over. Okay, continuing with 33, and then wants us to do the leaf spring. Um, the last time we did this, it took me a while to figure out, you know, from the pictures, which way this um, leaf spring goes in here. But there's a hole here for registration for a plate that goes on top of here. So this hole has to sit on top of the axle. So we, I now know that it goes this way. And this is where we need to get our pliers. Because now we have to get these two pins that came with the kit. So let's crack them open. So there's the two pins. Okay, now, like I said, this is where I'm going to turn this around here. This is a little easier for me to work with. Now, like we said before, or I said before, one end of the one end of each of these pins has some knurls on it so it grabs the plastic as it goes in you want that to go into the plastic last you want the smooth end smooth end to go in first so according to the directions they want us to do the rear one first so we're going to put this in here and actually i found that it was much easier to do if you held it with the pliers There we go. Had to give a little bit of pressure. Let's see if I can zoom in even a little closer for you guys so you can see this. There you go. So as you can see right here, this leaf spring looks like it's a little short of the holes, which are right here. What you actually have to do is compress the leaf spring a little bit to make it fit into there. So again, we're, we'll take our needle nose pliers Hold the end that has the little knurls on there. You put the smooth end in first. I'm trying to get this to fit in here, and I'm telling you, it's not that easy. But patience will endure. All right, I'm going to bring this back. And so what I did is it's going to be a little closer to me now. And there we go. Finally fit through. Now we will push this. Bring this back down here. <laughs> so now... There we go, and that fit in there. Okay. All right, next. Let's bring you guys out a little bit, huh? All right. Nexus has us putting this plate on here that's going to hold the shock absorber. Um, that's what this registration hole is for, because there's a registration pin on here. On here. Losing my voice. It fits right on there. And then that gets held in with a couple of PSO9 screws. And that is it for kit 33. Now we're going to move on to kit 34. We're going to put this back up here. And the first thing it has us doing is part 34E, which they call the shock absorber hold, shock <laughs> shock absorber holder we got tongue tied there okay so and again this came with another one of those little pins so we'll get that out of the package right there and again like i said one end is smooth the other has some knurls there to hold onto the plastic so we take this and then we want to take the shock absorber cylinder 
which is this part right here. And let's, this is really, there we go. And it wants to take the shock absorber cylinder and basically the same thing. It fits inside this, I, I call it, a, a, it's like a cleavus pin right here. So we're going to hold the, the retaining pin by the neural end and we're going to put this right in. All right, that went in fairly easy. And now it wants us to put it onto the bottom of the vehicle. So we are, has it like this. And if you can see, there it is, right there, that's where it goes. There we go, right there. All right, so. We're going to lower it into here. So it's in there and that gets held into place, PSO5 screw. And using my fingers, hold this in place so it doesn't move. And then just screw it in. And there it is right there, right in there. Now, the next thing it wants us to do, if it's like the other one, is actually wants us to take the shock absorber piston, a little silver right here, and it slides into the shaft that we just put in here. Just like that. And then it, it's going to come up and go into this hole right here. And it gets held in with a PSO8 screw. And you have to hold the shaft while you're screwing this in. Hey, phrasing! Because it will turn. Okay, so that is in there. As you can see, there's both of them that we did. Here and here. Continuing with uh, kit 34, it now is going to have us do the uh, brake rotor, the dust cover, and the brake caliper. This is, of course, the rotor, dust cover, and the brake caliper. Now, as we said before, this is completely optional, but what I do is, to make this a bit more realistic, is I cut out this section here on the dust cover, and I paint this black, and then on the brake caliper, I paint this Italian red, Tamea Italian red. So that's what we'll do next. Now for the dust cover, I primed that in Tamea's ultra fine uh, light gray primer. And once the gray primer dried on the dust cover, I shot it with uh, Tamea's TS29 semi-gloss black. Uh, again, I'll put the link below to all these colors I'm using. For the brake caliper, what I did is I primed it in Tamea's ultra fine surface primer in white. You got to make sure when you with this these parts you use the fine primer because you don't want a thick primer because the parts are so small. Once the white primer on the brake caliper dried, I just shot it real quick with Tamea's TS8 Italian Red. All right, we got our customized uh, dust cover, the red caliper we painted, and the rotor. And now, according to the directions, uh, we put this all onto the axle. So we'll put this here. You can notice there's two registration holes right here and right here. So we take the dust cover. That goes on like that. Then the rotor goes on. And then the brake caliper clips on. And it snaps right into the rear of the axle here. Okay, so that is all held in there. Whoops. Brake caliber fell off. It didn't snap in. Hold on. Turn it around here. There we go. Now it's on there. And as you can see, the dust cover in the back is black. 
and the red caliber. Looks really nice. All right, put this down here. And our direction stage, or rather kit 34, is complete. And that is it for issue 9. All right, summarizing what we did is we did the fourth tire and rim. Thank goodness this is the last one we had to do was soaking these tires in hot water. We then moved on and we put the wheel well on this side on. Then we moved on and we did the axle. And then we finished up with the uh, brake rotor. Well, thanks for joining me along on this build of our Eleanor Mustang uh, from Eagle Moss. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the, the like button. And uh, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified when more come out. I'll have links below to everything that I did today, any tools or any mods I did, and I'll have a link to the Eagle Moss site. So if you want to start building this or some of their other kits, which I highly encourage, uh, the link will be below for you to follow. Until next time, thanks for stopping by the Makers Cave. I'm Steve. I'll see you at the next build.